Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. Awesome. Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. And our guest today is Ron. So Ron, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us where you live and what you do for a living. Great. My name is Ron Gorley. Um, I live in South Lake, Texas currently. And right now, um, as an entrepreneur, I have a company called Trentec Bio Incorporated, which deals with nutraceutical technologies. And I'm currently merging um, four companies into a, a health science technology company that incorporates environmental animal and human science. Awesome. So how did you get the idea to start your company? <laughs> I wanted out of corporate America. <laughs> so I started, I started uh, like coming out of the eighties, uh, graduated university of Wisconsin. And I, I did the corporate thing. I you know, wanted to get in corporations, started working for some big companies. We'll leave them out, but these are fortune 100 companies matured myself through those companies. And within a short period of less than five years, I'd become a national marketing director and a prominent company. And these are all now companies that I spent a lot of time working with people nutritionally on ultra processed foods and the damage these foods have done in our systems. But I was part of the initial part of that. And then um, got a really good training. And I had a science mind growing up. Even in high school, I was taking college level chemistry classes. And I wanted I wanted to go back to that part of my brain. I, I wanted to get out of the corporate side of it. And I wanted to get back to this part that said, hey, I really want to work. And, and the two things I wanted to work on were human and environmental sciences. And they actually lend themselves to animal sciences because we use animals and we determine human sciences animals are part of the environment that determine how we work. So I ended up during my entrepreneurial career working in all of those fields. And I started my first company. And the interesting part about that story is I left corporate America and kind of got in my chemistry brain, was introduced to new molecular and, chemistry. And um, what year? Uh, that would have been about 99. 99, okay. And actually that would have been 96 because by 99, 96. I'd actually done some work in some of the technology fields for regrowing tissue, et cetera. So I, I got introduced to this molecular chemistry and <laughs> I got invited to the Rockefeller Institute in New York City. And at the time, the chairman emeritus was Dr. Joshua Lederberg. Um, need to look him up. This is a father of uh, AI, the father of genetics. And we were working on stuff that was revolutionary in terms of being able to keep inherently unstable compounds stable, like in, a, in an emulsion, which is like a lotion. But these are things that don't normally stay stable. And we were able to do that. So we built these complex emulsions where we could go and regrow tissue from the bone up in the human body, stop tissue from breaking down. We could go through it. We built active antimicrobial technologies that you could put on your hands that would keep your hands germ-free for six to 12 hours, not wash off, simultaneously heal your skin. And we were so far in front of the technology platforms that, I mean, you talk about breaking rice bowls. You learn a little bit as an entrepreneur that you can get too far in front of yourself. You can get so far in front that you you didn't think through how the people who currently held that order were going to react to your technologies. I learned that lesson. Um, we we outperformed the market. And 15, 18 years later, you know, the world is saying, where is this stuff? And we had done it. When I, when I really got disenfranchised with, you know, the, the first part of that, I had done um, a series of six months of wound care studies and we had rebuilt tissue in the human body, bone up. We did stage four, stage three, stage two wounds. And this is a product that was really, it's nutrition based on frequencies that we had done that technically you could eat it. But the way it was structured was such that the body saw it as subcutaneous tissue. That's the way it recognized it. And we got the body to do what we wanted. And the, the sorry about that, the essence of that was that I learned a lesson when I walked into a room where we had done six months of studies and, and I'm not kidding you. I was so excited. I put the whole deck together and we had taken wounds that they were going to cut people's legs and feet off from diabetic ulcers. And I'd go in and say, if I could, you know, if I can granulate tissue on that, on that bone 
in 36 hours, will you, you know, not cut it off and, you know, continue to, to heal it out? At that time and in medicine, they'd say, you can't do that. I said, well, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to put this on. The body's going to do it. I mean, this is just nutrition. And we would do it. And so I healed all this. And I'm not kidding you. This is what changed my head about my entrepreneurial career. I walked in to present this and I had the directors and all these people, people I worked with. Before I could present, they said to me, they said, look, we love your technology. We can't use it. And I said, what do you mean you can't use it? They said, we can't use it. We're losing money on amputations. That's when I learned a lesson. I learned a very big lesson about medicine and money, humanity, and what the Hippocratic Oath really means, which is unless it's producing dollars for us, we don't care about any oath. Right, right. Um, and that's when I decided that I was going to start focusing on helping people proactively take control of health, get in front of the disease. And you know, one of my goals right now is I, I hope people never have to go and see those wound care clinics because I know the end of that story and it hasn't changed that much. Right. Um, it's still, it's all about the profit, not the healing of the wound, but actually the profit in the wound. Right. So we work extensively on helping people with diets and, and food and proactively taking care of themselves. So that's kind of how I got to where I'm at right now. For sure. So I guess like, obviously that you can't mention names, but can you just like, describe an example of a specific use case of how somebody uses your business today? Um, well, sure. So Curcumin Pro if you go to curcuminpro.com or cpro.shop, curcumin is known in the world as one of the top anti-inflammatory, super antioxidant, also chelates heavy metals, and it comes from turmeric. And so one of the things we did was I started looking at, you know, how can I keep inflammation down? Because if you correlate that scientifically, they say 98% of all disease starts with inflammation. That's accurate because we have an inflammatory system in our body that one protects us and two will kill us. It does one of the two. You go hyperinflammatory, your body will actually literally start to fold in on itself in terms of defending so hard that it shuts your immune system down. Or you can have the regular side of you know immunity. So curcumin is known for this. And the problem with curcumin uh, in turmeric, by the way, is they're virtually insoluble. So just taking you as a, as a male, you're 70, 75% water. Women are about 60, 65%, which means that if something isn't water soluble, your cells can't take it up. So taking a bunch of turmeric or taking regular curcumin and thinking you're doing a wonderful job, they are virtually insoluble. So that means that no matter what you're doing, it's kind of like spitting in the ocean, trying to get the value out of it. Scientifically, the value is there, but the delivery system wasn't there. So what we did was uh, start working with some scientists. And we developed um, some intellectual property around taking the curcumin molecules, tucking them first inside of a protein. That was the first one. And the second one more developed was in, inside of a cyclodextrin. So I'll give you an example, take curcumin, put it inside a protein, increase the solubility by 42 times. The curcumin was in a protein. Now, when your body takes up the protein, it says, hey, you're a protein. doesn't see the curcumin. At the top of your small intestine, it pulls it across. As your body digests the protein, the curcuminoid molecules are sitting in there. They attach to part of the protein that's digested, and I can shuttle into your body. So the metabolic pathway says, I get a lot more free curcumin in your body. And I can give you that anti-inflammatory you're looking for, right? I can give you the, the super antioxidant you're looking for. And then we went a little bit further and we put it inside of, I know, horrible words, cyclodextrin. All it really is, it's a, it's a small starch molecule. It's a little sugar molecule that you can put things inside of. It's used commonly in medicines, but it's a natural sugar, a low glycemic, and you tuck it in. And now the body sees the sugar, which means I can digest it faster get the free curcumin in your body. So one of the things we do is I deal now with, um, as an example, we've done a lot of glucose control studies over 10 years. And we are, I'll just say that we're highly, highly effective at uh, controlling glucose in a body without having to go actually look at a pharmaceutical solution. And whatever your science is, you don't want to try to be a drug in the United States because the FDA will say you're a drug. We're not trying to. We were simply looking at sugar control. And right. basically saying, naturally, there are things you eat that drive sugars up. There's things you eat that drive sugars down, right? right? It's just part of natural. So everything we have is not a drug. It's just a natural solution. So yeah, what we do currently is we work with anti-inflammatories. So people who suffer from you know chronic pain issues related to, again, inflammation in the body, there's a natural way you can start to address that. And then if you really study curcumin as a whole, it's a really, it's an amazing set of molecules. 
those molecules cover uh, blood flow, they, they cover toxins, they, club, they cover a lot of things in the human body. So Curcumin Pro is, you know, part of the companies we built. And then um, we basically, because we could talk them in these beautiful things, instead of you having to take capsules, I made chewables that taste like orange creamsicles. So you can actually chew it and eat it. And normally curcumin and turmeric are very bitter. They're not, they're not yummy tasting. So I was able to do that. I built pet products. I did chocolates. I did a lot of different technology products where it says that you don't just have to be the person that sits there and shoves capsules down your throat right. and have a different way to take them. And the interesting note on that, just for everybody, is that 60% of the population over 60 has a hard time swallowing capsules and tablets. So if you have a super anti-inflammatory antioxidant that's beneficial and you're forcing people to take capsules they can't take, you're, you're missing a huge part of your population that loves the fact that they could take one of my chewables, tastes like orange creamsicles, sugar-free, good for their oral health, good for their, their whole system. And so I was always looking for a way to change delivery systems so that we're not stuck in the old, you know, there's a lot of pill fatigue today in this world. People are tired of taking handfuls of pills. So we look for other ways to do that. It's amazing. So I guess like, you, you know, obviously now we're in 2024, it's, it's, it's a new year. So what are some of your goals for this year? Like, what are you looking to achieve that would make this year successful for the business? It's a good question. So part of what I'm doing is I'm taking a couple technologies that in, involve uh, some of our clay technologies, curcumin technologies. We have a technology called Nutri Nanospheres. We can, we can actually take nutrition or even drugs for that matter, and we can take them down into nanospheres that are water soluble and shelf stable. I'm merging those companies together into a company called Health Science Technologies. So I'm taking 30 years of my work in all of those fields and really great technologies that add value to our current systems. Um, not at all trying to go and fight, you know, what I did in the early, trying to fight the world order. As a matter of fact, I'm going to license these technologies over to companies that currently are in those spaces, but they have risk because their products cause damage or can cause damage um, in terms of, of what it happens only because they didn't know how to do this. So my goals are to take these technologies and merge them move them into not only U.S., but uh, global platforms, which we're working on right now, and to, to really begin to shape the message going forward that you don't have to always swallow capsules. There's better technology and ways that we can help protect ourselves, if you will, prophylactically protect, just by employing better or, um, metabolism or distribution in our body of these uh, nutrients. And that is, it's, it's a big goal and it's coming true. I mean, it's going to happen this year. And I'm excited because there is 30 years of my environmental work, my animal science, my, right. my human science that comes together. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to watch how that's going to mature into a new, a new global message. It will be. Um, and how we start to address some of these issues without synthetic molecules, you know, how do we take care of, how do we take care of uh, PFOS and PCBs and in the environment that are contaminated? And we've done that with a natural solution, 100% natural, and we can in situ, we could do it right in the soil. We do it in the water. If you haven't paid attention, for instance, right now, the, this nano microplastics that they're talking about in the, in the media, we have a technology that we can put into a filter. It's a natural technology. It comes from a deposit here in the U.S., that will actually adsorb those nano microplastics and get them out of our water systems and our and our our food supply. So what excites me about that is being able to have known and worked with these companies for years and now finding a venue where I can actually finance and get them into a place where we can get them so that people can enjoy the benefits. It just changing what's in common products and giving those corporations new solutions. So essentially, like, like your vision is not so much to really sell your products directly. It's more so to get in front of companies, license it out, and maybe a kind of a, a white label your products so they could be sold, you know, in a, like in a more easier way. Correct. Yeah. Let's just say major licensing. I've branded, I've, I've worked with branded companies. I've branded products. It's extremely expensive. The market right. is blocked by a lot of people um, in corporations that are mm. actually pushing inferior products. And I mean that flat out. They're inferior Oh, for sure. Products. Yeah. Yeah. They control Amazon. They control the shelf space in retail. The cost of entry into retail is absolutely stupid if you're going to try to take a new technology. And so my goal is, to your point, 
maybe white label on, on one aspect, but really what I want to do is these are technologies. They can be implemented into existing distribution and companies. So I'd rather go in and say, hey, I'm going to help you build a better product. Here's right. the technology. Don't want to compete against you. I'm not even looking forward to that. My branded product in Curcumin Pro will soon be partnered into another entity so that they can begin to grow it. And I can focus more on what I do really well, which is identify technologies and then reposition them into the marketplace so that they have a voice, but I don't have to go spend all the ridiculous money to build those 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 brand positions, which is a tremendous amount of dollars these days. For sure. But have you looked into like other channels like direct to consumer, like e-commerce or now? Yeah, both. Okay. So we will be will be partnered in um, companies that have positions in both of those, direct to consumer, um, on Curcumin Pro, and then on the e-commerce side, that actually flips between the two. I have a position, I'm just going to partner it over. But going forward on the other technologies, when I'm talking about the clay technologies, and I'm talking about NNS, neutral nanosphere technologies, those I'm going to talk into corporations that already are branded globally. Um, and my conversations with them are, I have no intent of wanting to compete against them. I have every intent of bringing the technologies and building them a better product, and then just basically controlling the manufacturing position on it, making the products for them. I mean, they're proprietary, secret. Some of these things are highly just, they're, they're there, but I'm, I'm not interested in them taking over. I'm interested in them simply licensing it. Right. But I guess like thus far, right? Like how have you been able to get any level of awareness for your products? I feel like what you're saying seems to make so much sense, but like most Americans don't even know that this solution is possible. So how have you been able to get in front of people so far? Well, in Curcumin Pro, we started down the e-commerce side and, and okay. you know, I started down that road. Curcumin is a very crowded market, very crowded. And it's got a lot of, excuse me, garbage in it. For instance, okay. you got all these turmeric people. Here's the turmeric world. And I hope everybody listening to this listens very hard with this. It is the cheapest product that they're trying to shove big profits on. It's very inexpensive. It's just basically the turmeric root ground up. Um, you don't know the purity of it whatsoever. Turmeric as a spice, right? In Indian food, we know that. Personally, and a lot of other people like me, the turmeric oils are highly, highly disruptive in my GI tract. Indian meals for me don't last long in my system. Or right, like a lot of people. And turmeric oils and high, high amounts of turmeric actually can cause kidney stones. And so when you take the amount of turmeric that both the Indian people eat and they say, oh, you know, they don't have cancer. That's, that's not true. They, they make all these claims and they claim the value of what are the curcumin molecules. So curcumin is the name of one of the curcuminoids. So curcuminoids are a series of molecules inside of turmeric that consist of three and a half percent of the plant. That's it. So if you extract them all out and you take a 95% concentration and then you still go back into the market, it's still insoluble, right? But that's where the value is. That's where the anti-inflammatories and antioxidants and everything are. So you got people taking a thousand and two thousand milligrams of turmeric and what they're getting is stomach aches. They're probably getting right. a lot of disruption. It is, it contributes to kidney stones. But the people who sell it sell the lie that that is going to give you all the benefits that the molecules that you extract get. And those people are telling you not the truth, because in order for you to get the value of that, you have to increase the bioavailability. And I and here's another lie real quick. Bioavailability, getting into your bloodstream. I could do that all day long. You take vitamin C capsules, you get really bright urine. You just had expensive urine. That's all you had. Because to assimilate it into the cell, to go through the body and get the value actually into the cell itself, the assimilation, that's your goal. The goal is not bioavailability. The goal is assimilating into the cell. So as I go through this, I said, my education and my learning is I've learned a whole lot about you know how the industry, like when I go into e-commerce, is full of garbage. Absolute products. True. It's true. And even my competitive, when we do competitive studies, and I've done competitive studies on curcumin, on every curcumin product in the top, right? There's a couple of good ones, right? But here's what they can never do. They can never turn it into a liquid product like I can. They can't put it in pet products. It's nasty, bitter. They can't put it in chocolates and they can't make orange cream sickle flavorings. And they can't get to the level. We still beat them in free curcumin delivery. Here's the problem. How do you get that message out on a retail shelf? 
you're not going to do it, right? right yeah, so yeah. how are you going to get it out on Amazon? You're, you're not going to do it. I mean, it's it's a game. You know, Amazon's a, it's, that's a whole other world. So it, it's very difficult. So to your point, what I basically said was, I said, you know what? I'm going to take all my work, all my science, all my research. And I'm going to go direct to consumer where I can send all the messaging, the research, the value of the products, and people can share the information to the to their friends without, you know, I have to do it once. They then can go, you know, duplicate all the information, take it out. So there's a lot of SEO work I've done. There's a lot of information on Curcumin Pro. There's me doing a lot of different things. And I'm going to move all that direct to consumer on that, on that brand. And then everything else I'm doing, I'm going to start to move very much into licensing, uh, very, you know, high profile licensing into companies. And, um, you know, I'm going to talk to any filter company that'll talk to me about putting, you know, our, our clay technology, it's, it's actually, this is an acidified clay now, into their filters. Think about this for a minute. Wouldn't you want a filter in your house for your shower, for your water you're drinking? Right, right. The bottled water companies, the researchers came out, the three top bottled waters, they don't tell you who it is because they'd be sued, have nano uh, microplastics in them. And if I could tell you that, they have some of the best water filtration systems on the planet in, in their plant, in their bottling plant. So what does it tell you about the technology that we now know is in the bottling plants, in our water plants, in our, in our wastewater plants that are doing our city water? I just had two meetings uh, yesterday on city waters that are now running tests, and they have nano microplastics in the city water. So my point is, is that, so what do I do with that? I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go try to build that. I'm going to go to everybody who builds filtration systems for any industrial plant or any consumer product and say, "Here's your solution. I will ship you super bags of this clay technology that all you have to do is employ it into your current product and your distribution system. Go market it, and I'm more than happy to do that and be that guy than to be the guy that has to go." build a product, take it to market, send the message. That is, I'm, I'm sorry, that's a beating. I, I've been through that beating. No, for sure. So if somebody watching this wanted to reach out to you, do you mind sharing your website or social media? I guess the best ways to get in contact with you. Um, I mean, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, you can also, in Curcumin Pro, you can go to curcuminpro.com, curcumin, C-U-R-C-U-M-I-N, P-R-O.com, or just go cpro, C-P-R-O dot shop. And you go look at our products. Um, by the way, one of the best products I ever developed with our team is called Brain Boost. That is an absolutely amazing product for everybody every day. Total immune system, total cellular health, plus cognitive increase. Brilliant product. That's a great way to get me. Or you can also just, uh, you can use my Gmail account, which is ron.j.gorley, G-O-U-R-L-E-Y, at Gmail. And I do welcome people to to reach out and look at our technologies. We are We are well entrenched. And being able to take messaging to people who are willing to share it with their with their distribution groups or their customers, then I don't need any more in my life. I don't need to go build a brand and, and be the guy that sits on the top of the brand hill. Don't need to do that. That's a, that's a game for other people. And by the way, sure. the top of those companies, if you know this, you'll know that the best technologies don't reside there. They just for don't. Sure. No. The best technologies reside in places where you have to go find them because the companies can't get a foothold. Yeah, it's just good marketing. It's people, it's companies that have, you know, very high budgets. So, well, anyways, Ron, thank you so much for your time today. We're rooting for you to have lots of success. And uh, thanks again. Thanks, Dan. I enjoyed it. Thanks. All right, bye. Bye.